Welcome to part four of the repurposing series here at D-Lab Electronics. In this video, I'm going to have some guys come in here and play the amp and give me their initial impressions and advice for improvement. So I got Tony Cusmano and Bob Wise at the helm. Let's go. All right, everybody, this is part four of the repurpose amp video series. I've got Tony Cusmano here to shake down the 6L6 amp. So I'm let him play it and he can give you his honest <laughs> opinion. Believe me, he's got a lot of opinions. Go ahead, man. All right, well, here we are back at D-Lab. Uh, I've been playing with this amp for a few minutes here. Uh, I'm not really 100% happy with the way it sounds. It sounds a little mid-range scoopy. I've tried to dial the uh, tone controls on it way back and get the proper balance to try and get more of a full range sound and uh, it's also I feel like we're lacking in the game Terry's gonna step up another gain section on it I got the amp cranked all the way up right now it has master and a front end volume and it doesn't really seem to be putting out I don't think as much as it should for as much voltage as he has on the 6L6 on this amp so hopefully uh, his next step will be to address these issues. Mm -hmm. Someday I'll learn how to tune a guitar. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man, that's good. So that's where we're at, people. I'll make some changes, and I'll get this guy back over and let him go through it again. Thanks, man. Yep. All right, so it's no surprise to me to hear that the amp is suffering from gain. That 6L6 does require a little bit of drive on the grid, and by the time the signal passes through the tone circuits, the amplitude is a little bit too low to properly drive that output tube. So what I'm going to do is add another single triode, say, post-tone control amplification, okay? We're going to install it and put it in line between the preamp output and the 6L6 input grid. So let's get it. Well, here's my thoughts. We have an open slot right here for a 7-pin tube socket. There used to be a 6AQ5 there. I'm going to install a 6C4, which is a medium mu tube, okay? So this guy is going to interface between the 12AX7 and the 6L6 and hopefully provide the boost that we need. But the first thing I'm going to do is measure the current signal with a known input so that after we make the change, we can see the difference. Well, here's our test setup. I'm using the leader audio generator. The master control on the amp is all the way up. Tone controls are straight up. We're gonna max out the volume and I'm coming into it with about 100 millivolts. So we're just gonna see what the preamp signal looks like and then we'll add the new amplification stage and see if we get more output and perhaps some breakup. So here we go, crank her up. So I'm seeing about 40 to 50 volts PEP with no distortion on that preamp. Nice perfect sine wave, but that's not going to give you that nice class A breakup. So let's make the improvements and see what we get then. All right, there is our new tube socket. That will be for the new single triode post tone amplification. So I'll get that wired up and we'll test it. So I've temporarily installed the new circuit. I've been playing with the plate resistor to get the right amount of gain. So same test, I've got the master all the way up, the tone control straight up, and here's my volume. Now watch the scope. So this is the output signal. You can see we can go beyond the point of breakup to where we get some uh, feedback action. So I can bring that back with my master now. So that all looks good. I just need to get rid of that right there. All right, first thing I want to do 
is getting rid of this guy. I'm going to land a terminal board, swing the master wiring over this way, and route our signal direct into the 6L6. That may eliminate this crazy feedback that we're seeing. So let me do that and we'll retest. All right, so I've made the changes. The new driver stage is installed. I've swung the master volume controls over next to that tube, and this wire now feeds the grid of the 6L6. I also changed the master pot from the one meg to a 250K because I found that the first, say, one third of the pot was usable, the rest of it was not. All right, so here's where we're at. I've got the D-Lab audio test set hooked up now so we can see approximate wattage out of the amplifier. Scope is looking across the input of the BNC jack. So we'll look at the sine wave, we'll look at our wattage, and see how well the amp's performing. I've got master pretty much all the way up. We're hitting her with a little under 2000 hertz. So I'm easily hitting 10 watts, getting some nice breakup. But here's the thing that kind of concerns me, okay? Let me adjust the time. Look at our sine wave. See how we have this nice little peak on the down slope, but on the rise slope, she's kind of rounded like rolling hills. When the guys played this amp here, they complained, playing with the tone controls right now, that it was missing mid-ranges. Bass was good, trouble's almost ice picky, but it was missing the mids, and I bet you that's the reason why. So that's the next step for our little repurpose amp is to do some wave shaping. Could be bias, could be the coupling cap that I have on the cathode of the output tube. But we're going to find that out in part five. So I bet you guys are wondering if I was going to get part four on for this weekend. It has been horrendously busy here at D-Lab. I've been trying to kick out some ham radio stuff. I had a couple more guitar amps show up, but I really wanted to get this on for you, okay? So I have made some changes to the schematic. I'm going to post it right now so you guys can take a look. So this is Rev. D, right, for the new drive stage. So if you take a look, you can see the 6C4 tube that I've added, okay? And you can see the master pot now is a 250K. The reason I did that is it appeared as though only about one quarter of the pot was doing anything. After that, it was just there riding along. So I reduced it to 250K. You could probably get away with a 500K. I don't know. Anyway, now I'll go to the D1. You can see the circled area, and that's where the major changes have been made. So just one more little tube triode and the master volume pot. Now that gave us the gain that the amp needed to get to full power. Now we need to play with the wave shaping. So luckily for me, I've got some brainiacs that I work with. And we like to sit around and talk about this, and they are loving the repurposed project. They're both double E engineers, right? So I was like drawing sketches and showing them what was going on with this waveform. And one guy said, well, hey, it looks to me like your power supply can supply the current, but it doesn't like it when the current comes back. And I was like, whoa, I never thought about that. So it could be issue with the filter caps, could be issue with how I biased it. So in part five, we're going to play with the bias. And if I have to, I'll install a negative bias circuit just like Fender did and see if that affects the waveform. Should be really cool. We'll see you in the next part.